Uh, last Sunday at the uh, Elephant Trunk Flea Market, I picked up a couple things. And look at this. This is one of the things I picked up. This is beautiful acrylic rod. And look at the color on that, huh? This is just a, a beautiful amber color. And uh, this is nice if you have to turn down and make any knobs or anything. And this stuff is pretty expensive, you know. Um, but I tell you, it's it's good to have on hand. And when you find it, you don't usually find this color. So I picked up these. And the next item I picked up was for a friend, uh, you know, Steve, good friend of the show. Hey, everybody. So uh, Steve needed, uh, he has a vise. And what's holding the jaws on the vise is these screws. And they're kind of like a, a button head screw almost. But they're... Uh, an unusual size and it's a 1028 so uh, Steve wanted to know if I could possibly uh, use you know turn it down on the lathe and I said I'll give it a shot you know because the single pointing that's when you just run a, a tool across to make these uh, threads is a little difficult for something this small but uh, a 1028 is a very unusual screw here and uh, it was very hard to you know he couldn't even find them for uh, anything decent so uh, what I did was when I was at the flea market, I picked up, I, I forgot which size, yeah, I knew it's like a three quarter inch, I guess, button die. I don't have anything that small, a die holder. And rather than make one, I picked up this, uh, this one here. Actually, I picked up two because I didn't know what size it was. I didn't have the die with me. So uh, I picked those up for $5 and let's clean them up and then we'll, we'll work on getting this started for Steve. Okay, with uh, only five minutes on the wire brush and wipe down with a little WD-40, uh, when you have really good steel, uh, it is this. It's a joy to work with, and and you could see these uh, these dies here, uh, this one here. You could see at the insignia here. That's uh, Greenfield Tap and Die on the upper. There you go, Greenfield Tap and Die on top, USA, and it's a national fine, and it's a ten by thirty-two, uh, and over here. This is a 632, again, Greenfield Tap and Die, National Course, that's the uh, designation for certain thread pitches. And this is also a Greenfield Tap and Die, uh, a die holder. And uh, this one here, look how nice they cleaned up. Again, because you have nice steel and, uh, you know, whenever you get good old American steel and and uh, it is a little bit of surface rust that comes right off. So now they're usable. Let's go make this. Now, screw. one consideration whenever you're working on a lathe or any type, you want to use the material that has the least amount of waste. Now, you can see we're going to make this screw here, this uh, little bolt. And what we want to do is we want to have the head size as close as we can. That's an exact fit. That's 3 eighths of an inch. This is 3 eighths inch rod, steel rod. Now, if you were to use something like this, this is. Uh, uh, quite a bit of, of stock removal you'd have to do and that, that's time and money So anytime you're always trying even if you have to salvage your bolt It's it's easier to start with something that makes it that much easier than to go with a bigger piece and cut it down Now the first thing we want to do is we want to take the actual rod down to size so I think uh, the number 10 was hundred and eighty two thousandths, but uh, we took it down to size we measured it and uh, we measured it next to Steve's bolt. And then after we took it down to size, uh, then we're going to position the die handle into the lathe. Now, it's very important that this goes on square and true because a crooked thread will give you nothing but trouble. And to do that, we take the tailstock and we put our drill chuck in there, but with the drill chuck open. So we're just using the face of the drill chuck to hold it square with the work. And you can see every uh, time I'm feeding the drill chuck in a little bit to keep make sure it's square until I have a good uh, purchase on, on to the threads. Now I'll put it in great grandpa's vise and I'll run it back and forth a couple times, finish the thread, put it back in the lathe. And now we got to determine how big we want the head, the philister head. Here it is. We did it the same size of Steve's and then I just made a scribe line and I finish it off with the hacksaw then put the bolt back into the lathe and finish off the head and also put a chamfer on both sides so that uh, it's uh, not hard on your hands okay we got the uh, screws cut now we got to cut a slot in the top and the best way I found is um, drill a hole that's a slightly smaller thread this screw in here and then uh, put it in the vise and then just cut it with the hacksaw. Just give a nice slot right down the middle. And now uh, to do that, you have to 
line it up carefully, give a light cut, and then look at it because it's very hard to do it with the hacksaw to see if you're one way or the other. But once you, you like where you're at and then in the middle, then you can make your deeper cut. Now to get it centered, what I like to do is to put gently lay the saw on top of the uh, the blank and do a draw stroke. Pull back straight, just lean back. Hold it close to your chest, the saw, and just lean your body back until you're satisfied that that's in the middle. When you think it's it's centered, uh, then you could put a little depth into the cut, not going too deep. Just always bend to the side and look at a side profile to see how how deep you want to go and uh, again try and keep the saw level so you're not rocking it and you want to go about halfway down and it should look like this centered and it's about halfway down so that's the way it should look when you're done So there we have four 1028 screws for uh, Steve's vise for the jaws. So uh, let's get to our next part. Okay, next up on this Fix It Friday is uh, this is Joe's clamp. You know Joe, Charlie's owner, a uh, good friend of the show. Joe had this clamp, and it's obviously missing the foot. But it, um, you can see here the swivel pad is missing, but that foot that's on there, it seems to be a little bent. So no matter what kind of foot we put on there, it's going to wobble as you close it. So we got to straighten that out. And uh, otherwise, the clamp is in great shape. A little weld splatter here. But uh, we're going to take this off, see if we'll straighten that out, make a quick foot for that. Now, we can't get out the uh, the shaft from the from here because it's locking up on these threads. You see some of them are mashed. See that one right there? That's mashed up. So that, what you have to do is you have to take a triangular file. And uh, with that triangular file, you have to go in between the threads and, and get rid of that mash up here so that uh, we can remove this from from the uh, housing so I'm going to do that with a file and get those threads at the end looking okay okay here's where we're at we were able to get it out it took uh, quite a bit of force to get out but uh now look at the bend here Watch as I spin it, and you could see it's a pretty nasty bend at the end. And that's going to, you know, spin that uh, swivel pad all over the place. we got to straighten this out. Now, it's got to be bent down. I know what you're thinking. Let's get to the dake. But uh, it's a little bit harder because now it has to be held down here while that pr gets pressed down. It's this I have to think about, how we're going to straighten that piece out. You see that, that bend that's in there? It's uh, it's quite extensive, so we got to straighten that tip out, and then uh, we got to clean up this this. Okay, tip here's off. the setup. Uh, we put a V block, great grandpa's vice, along with a magnetic base and a dial indicator to find out where the high spot is on this uh, this rod. Now we're going to place this into the V block here, and I'm pressing down on the threads to keep it uh, flush. You know that's true. Now, we're going to spin this like this, and the dial indicator will show us where the high spot is as it comes around. The, uh, the, the further this needle goes to the right, the higher uh, the spot is. So you can see there, that's a, a, a low spot. You know, we're getting lower, lower. That's about the low spot right there. So it should be opposite there. So as we bring it around here, we're coming up like this, and... We're getting real high there. Up, oh, right about there is the high spot. So that what you do is you hold it here like this, and then you take a magic marker and you mark the top of it. That's the high spot. Okay, we're here at the dake, everybody's favorite. Now, let's look at this crazy setup. What we have is we uh, put the threaded area, the threaded rod, into the... Uh, into a V-block. We uh, put a nose cone, a step nose cone on here to get a... Uh, you know, so that we can see what we're doing. The magic marker is right on the top, and uh, we have the V-block sitting on a steel plate, but we had to make sure that it wouldn't pop up, so we have a steel bar clamped on both sides, and uh, let's see if okay, this Okay, we're going to do this real time, because uh, <laughs> this way if, if it snaps, we can see what happens. See? Here it comes. Okay, now we got to take all this apart and see how much, if it did deform a little bit. I could see it did move down a little bit. 
Now, uh, let's take it out and take a look. Okay, we're back at the setup here. Now, you remember how much of a deflection there was. So, let's put it in here. And we could see. Okay. You know, we, we took a tremendous bend out of that, huh? Look at that. We're only at about uh, 20,000 or so. And, and some of that is just, a, that's really good. So, we took a lot of that out of there. It's pretty straight. So, let's go see what we can, uh, let's see what we can do. Okay, we have it well within specs. Look at that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is make the little pad. Double Dake Friday. Boy, we don't get too many of these, right? Anyway, now it's time. I'm going to try and press this on here. You can see I, I have it just like this, and I'm going to give it a little heat, and then hopefully this will pop in there. I recess the inside a little bit, and hopefully that's enough. So you only really get one shot at this, so let's give it a shot. Yes, the moment of truth. Woohoo! Success. Okay, we are calling this clamp done. This Williams number 404. Uh, it's a deep throat clamp with the, now it has the new uh, swivel pad on there, the straightened out threads. And uh, I left everything, basically just took off all the, the rust and scale and then I polished the outside because this is when you grab it. I mean, this is what feels nice. Obviously the threads work like a dream, you know, smooth as can be. And uh, we did get that swivel cup to, uh, to sit in there and, and to uh to seat nicely so it's in there without any clips or peening over so it's just a nice clamp and i think joe's really going to like this one because uh just a joy you know i love these clamps to begin with but you, know, you can always paint any color you want but i always liked it polished on the outside here so in closing i hope you have a great weekend thanks very much for watching take care now bye bye